There is an important sort of subculture within Fuji photographers who are more traditional in the style of photography that they do. They're more minimalist um, in their workflow. They work very hard to get everything right in camera. They utilize Fuji's filmic profiles and JPEG in camera processing to achieve their artistic vision without having to involve a computer at all or minimally. And for these type of photographers, this is the closest that they can get to shooting in the style of film photography in a modern digital camera that they would like to. And that process appeals to them as it is true in some regards to the filmic tradition where the profiles that they develop in camera closely resemble film in both style and in creative constraint. And the term that this group of Fuji photographers use when they talk about their in-camera JPEG processing is recipe. This was a term coined by Richie Roche, the author and founder of Fuji X Weekly, which many of you will be familiar with. Richie was one of the first who started experimenting with recipes and making these recipes available for others. But we'll come back to Richie in a minute. But for those of you who hear the phrase I repeat often, digital art with an analog heart, and for whom that phrase resonates, you'll appreciate the appeal of an in-camera process. But it may come as a surprise to you guys that I don't actually shoot with in-camera JPEG very often. Um, during the last four years or whatever of, of shooting Fuji, four or five years, our process has largely been the same. Danae and I both shoot with the same cameras and often the same memory card in RAW. Danae typically does the culling and editing once we've got a card ready. And um, by edit, I use the more traditional term where she's choosing the shots that we keep and those that we do not. And then I go in and do the retouching. Um, it's during the, that, that retouching process, um, whether in Capture One or Lightroom, where I ultimately decide which Fuji color profile to go with as a basis. And then we tweak the colors and curves and exposure after. But typically, unless we're talking um, stylized fashion photography or something with more modern feel, I'm gonna just go with um, a Fuji filmic profile like Portra, Astia, Classic Chrome, or Acros, and only make very small tweaks after that. And in that process, often Danae and I do a little back and forth to find a neutral happy ground where we're both pleased. So for us, um, we share just about everything, including credit for the photography. Um, we share an Instagram account. We often can't remember which of us took which photo. And for many of you, that might seem odd, but for now it's working great for us. But because of this sort of shared vision and process of photography, um, and also just because of the natural give and take when it comes to the style of retouching that we do in post, for us it makes a lot more sense to shoot in raw. So when people ask us to share our recipes that we used, um, which actually is a question we get very often, I can't give you an answer. But lately, as I've been experimenting more with Fuji X Raw Editor, as well as Fuji's in-camera processing, I've come away enjoying the results I'm getting from Fuji's in-camera processing far more than I am with Capture One or Lightroom for multiple reasons that I, maybe this isn't the right video to get into all of that. Um, but additionally, the older I get, the less desire I have to sit in front of a computer and retouch photos. I derive a lot more satisfaction out of the whole process when I can get everything right in camera and take a photo straight off a photo dump and feel good about it being ready for print, for sharing, or for archiving without a big fuss or to-do. For me, it really has brought so much more life back into photography, and so I've been diving deeper into recipes and experimenting with them. So over the past month, I decided I would choose a specific recipe or I guess family of recipes and see what effect that it had on my photography. As many of you know, I absolutely love classic Chrome. You can see my video here to get my full thoughts on that profile and why I love it so much. But the promise that it was the modern Kodachrome that always felt a bit hollow uh, the more I got into it. It wasn't until I studied the photos of Richie Roche, again from Fuji X Weekly, that I finally felt like someone had nailed that Kodachrome look um, and had unlocked what, what classic Chrome could be. And that is that it could be a modern Kodachrome if it was tweaked slightly. Now, for those of you who don't know what Kodachrome is and why it's special, just a little bit of history for you. Kodachrome was one of the oldest and longest running color slide films available. It went through many iterations in its time um, over decades, um, but it was well known for being flexible for documentary photographers in particular more than most films. And um, 
at least slide films. And that means that it had more dynamic range and latitude. So if you messed up exposure in the heat of the moment, it was gonna be more forgiving than other types of films. Not only that, but it was great for archival. So from a practicality standpoint, it was a photojournalist color film choice for decades being used extensively or even exclusively by photographers such as Steve McCurry and Alex Webb. Sadly though, in 2009, Kodak discontinued production of Kodachrome owing to the processing required to develop it. Unlike C41 or E6 color films, um, it's impossible to process Kodachrome at home. Developers had to utilize and maintain large machinery with specialized chemicals and without Kodak maintaining a fleet of Kodachrome development machines, the film became Distinct. As far as characteristics, Kodachrome 64 is known for having a lot of warmth and saturation when provided a lot of natural light. It really shines out of doors. It tends to subdue the luminance in the blues and it has high contrast. In many ways, it's similar to classic chrome, though not as cool and more saturation in the reds, at least from what I've seen. And for me, um, who didn't find a love and passion for film photography until long after the death of Kodachrome, but who feels so much inspiration from photos taken on Kodachrome, it's a very sad thing. Lately, I've been going through my grandfather's slides. He was an amateur or enthusiast photographer and he shot a lot on Kodachrome. It makes me feel connected with him and I really wish I had a chance to shoot on Kodachrome today. So naturally, as I began looking into some recipes to try, looking at Richie's um, Fuji X weekly articles about the different Kodachrome inspired recipes that he'd created and that struck a chord with me. So I bit the bullet, I switched my camera to RAW plus JPEG and I began punching in these settings to see what I could get. Now there are several different iterations of the Kodachrome profiles on Fuji X Weekly. So I started with Richie's Kodachrome Vintage. For this one, Richie tried to follow an older Kodachrome um, style which has different qualities than later Kodachrome film, which you can read about on, on the articles that he has. I'll link to those below. And that's a fun one and it can work really well in the right type of light. But I did find that it did some unnatural things to skin tones. You can see in the fall off um, from the highlights to midtones um, some strangeness. There isn't a smooth fall off. All the midtones are sort of treated identically and a little bit muddy. So I think if you're photographing things, this can work pretty good. Um, and it's a very interesting filmic profile Profile, but for skin tones, I think it has issues. So next I moved on to Richie's Kodachrome 64 and Kodachrome 2 profiles. These two are very similar with only a couple minor tweaks. They really are nice. More subdued in saturation, but um, it is higher in contrast. This feels closer to classic chrome to me, but has a warmth to it with deeper browns especially. For me, I enjoyed this one a lot on how it treated skin tones. In these examples, I can't really remember which were Kodachrome 64 and which were uh, Kodachrome 2. Should have taken better notes, but they'll at least give you an idea of what you can expect here. So my next step was to make this my own to more of a degree, and I did this by bringing these shots up in Fuji X Raw Studio. And for anyone wanting to really dial in a recipe or set a, uh, get a set of recipes that work well for you, I'd recommend trying this out. This software allows you to make adjustments to your photos using the camera's JPEG processing engine, so you have to plug your camera in while you use it. 
It's a little bit kludgy, um, but this will allow you to play with the settings until you feel like you've got a recipe dialed. And I'd recommend taking a variety of raw shots representative of the types of shots that you'll get in various circumstances, pulling them up here and figure out what sort of settings are gonna resonate with you. Once you've got that figured out, it becomes a simple thing to punch those back into your camera and save these as new custom profiles that you can switch between later. So in case any of you are interested in the Kodachrome inspired recipe that I've come to appreciate the most over this process and which I can guarantee that I will be using much, much more in the future, as long as Danae is okay with it, of course, is um, the recipe on your screen now. This is pretty much Richie's Kodachrome 2 profile, but with some less contrast. If you enjoyed this but felt like maybe it was a little over your head, I'd encourage you to join the channel at the mentorship level. I'd love to provide you some more hands-on instruction as well as give you the opportunity to work your way through my many workshops designed to help you master your Fuji device and the art of photography in general. I'd also encourage you to subscribe to Fuji X weekly updates and I want to give a big thanks to Richie again for all his experimentation and sharing of knowledge. The Fuji community has benefited a great deal from that work and it's done a lot to inspire a lot of people, including me. But that's all I've got for you for now, guys. Remember to do some good with your Fuji Filmic profiles, and we will talk to you again real soon.